Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Evie of Evie Star Music and SRO Magazine, as well as Banks Radio Australia. And I'm about to, we're, I'm about to have, a, I can't even talk today, a video interview with Stuart Green from Crawl. So give me just a second to call him and we will chat via video, okay? Make sure this stays in place. All right, here we go. Hello. Hey. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. It's good to Hi. see you. And you. How's things going? You know, they're going. <laughs> I hear it's uh, unseasonably hot for Canada. It's, uh, it's like Florida hot. Yeah. I'm well aware of that heat. <laughs> yeah. So I was actually supposed to be in Atlanta this weekend for um, Wrecking Ball. Uh, and uh, I just I couldn't make it for whatever reason, but uh, I'm sure it's probably as hot or hotter there right now. So absolutely, yeah. What's kitty? Like, huh? I see the kitty. Oh, a big fat one. Yeah, she's uh, that's me now. She's a mess. She's spilled rotten. Nice. So um, this is Stuart Green of Crawl, everybody from Toronto, Canada, right? Yeah. You guys are kind of spread out though, from what I understand. We are. Uh, we're sort of split between Toronto and a city called Windsor, which is on the border with Detroit. Wow. Yeah, Tom said it was like four or five hours in between some of you? Uh, yeah, three and a half, four hours. How yeah. do you guys manage to be able to write and practice and play? We, we literally meet in the middle. We, uh, it's that compromising where you sort of, uh, we, we meet two hours away. So. A uh, city called London uh, in Ontario, oh, okay, which is okay. right in between Windsor and Toronto. And so that's where we go to uh, make the magic. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, and from what I was reading, you guys have been together since 92, but then kind of split and came back. What's, tell, what's the deal with that, the story of Crawl? Uh, so, uh, well, I mean, 25 years in a nutshell. Um, so yeah, we formed the band, Tom, Scott, and I formed the band in around 90, probably they got together late 91, I think I joined early 92, and then we, uh, we got a singer, um, in Toronto here through, uh, through, a, a one ad in a local newspaper. Um, we did that for a few years. I left the band in 95, uh, after we had some pretty significant success, I mean, by, uh, by Toronto and Canada standards. Um, so, you know, we, we put out uh, a couple of independent cassettes, and we did a, a CD. We had videos in rotation on Much Music, which is the Canadian MTV. Actually, I know what um, Much Music is. I've heard of that one before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, and so we uh, we got nominated uh, for two years in a row. We were nominated for Best Hard Rock Video um, Canadian. Uh, we were up against some, you know, some pretty significant bands, which is probably why we lost. Um, but, you know, just to be nominated was an honor. It so is. we did that. Um, and then around 1995, uh, you know, my life changed and um, I, uh, I left the band and uh, they continued on with a guy named uh, Anthony Poto. Um, they put out a, a second CD, uh, which was songs that were, some of which were written when I was in the band, some of which were written with Anth. Um, they did a couple of cross Canada tours. We toured a bit when I was in the band, but nothing like, you know, Carl did sort of in the 96, 97 period. Um, and, uh, then, you know, the, the usual story, you know, bands, you sort of, I mean, I think what happened with crawl is, if we, yeah, we sort of got to a level and it was kind of like, you know, it was make or break time. And, um, unfortunately the music scene in Canada at the time was such that, you know, the biggest bands coming out of Canada were, you know, bare naked ladies, tragically hip, sort of more. Um, straight ahead kind of rock bands. Um, so for heavy rock bands like Crawl, there, there wasn't really a place. And so I think a lot of that kind of, you know, factored into, you know, the band sort of just kind of, you know, going their own way. Um, and around, I think, 1997 was probably the last actual Crawl show um, until 2012. And um, so uh, Scott and I started talking in around 2011. 
um, and we talked about sort of pulling the band back together. We uh, we approached uh, Tom in uh, in 2012, and he was originally a little reluctant to do it, and I'm sure he would tell you that. Um, and uh, he, like me, hadn't played in a number of years, but once the idea sort of gets back in your head that, you know, hey, we had something pretty special, and, you know, we're at a point in our lives, at, you know, in 2012, which is, you know, we've moved along, and so, um, you know, the idea of getting the band back together is, is quite appealing. So we did, and we did that in probably uh, 2012. We, uh, we found a new singer, a guy named Mike, Mike Wolf, who um, we found through a friend of ours, Chad Valier, mm -hmm. and uh, so we started working with Mike, and we started writing with Mike, and uh, it all just sort of clicked. So, summer of 2012 was the first Crawl reunion show. We did a show in Toronto, a little preview show, and then we did a full blown reunion show in Windsor, um, which uh, which was great. It was amazing. So we've just kept going since then. I mean, it was you know the show in Windsor was uh, was um, a tribute show to Tom's mom, who um, was. She was uh, Wendy was awesome. She was our den mother. She was she was the band's mom, and um, unfortunately we lost Wendy to uh, to cancer. And um, so Tom thought you know it, it would be great if we could do a show in her in her name. We raised some money for you know cancer research, and we were really proud of that. And um, but it just you know it, it kind of felt like old times. So. We just sort of kept it going, and, uh, and so now it's when I like around the time you guys came out. What I consider rock now, like Godsmack, Disturbed, Papa Roach, it's all right. considered metal now, not just rock. And so I can imagine how hard it was for you because you guys were definitely considered like hardcore metal back then, you know. And to me, you're you're not. It's just metal, no. but still. You know. We're we're uh, yeah we're we're in a weird place and this is, I think going back to sort of what happened to crawl in the early days was you know um, we I I never really considered this metal um, but I don't That's come from a metal mean. background you know Tom <laughs> Tom is is our is the band's token metal guy Tom is you know he's he's serious XF uh, serious XF um, octane and all those channels Tom is that you metal know octane fanatic yeah, but he's probably a same. liquid metal. Right, all those, all those stations like that's that's Tom and, and Scott too, um, but at the time it was Tom was heavily into Pantera and I was more I was more sort of an old school punk guy. Uh, I also like prog rock a lot. Um, you know, Mike is a classic rock, more of a classic rock guy. Scotty's into The Cure and all kinds of like gothy wow. stuff. So you know, we came like the from base is covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we sort of came from this weird place, and then when we when it all came together. I guess, you know, we were playing stuff that in the 90s would have been considered grunge. You know, we, we got a lot of comparisons to like Soundgarden and, and Quicksand and Helmet, uh, bands that I think are awesome. And, uh, you know, it was we, we were actually fortunate enough to play with both Quicksand and Helmet back in the 90s, which right. was amazing. Um, so not, not really metal, but then we sort of got booked on some like hair metal shows early on. It, it's been a weird ride, but, um, you know, we're, we're just all about sort of, you know, hard hitting rock and, you know, I, yeah, for me, speaking it, of know, that on your Facebook page, you guys in the short description, it says hard rocking thud and a sonic wallop. What the fuck is a sonic wallop? So, um, <laughs> that was us trying to be clever. Uh, no, it's to clever, but I <laughs> Just trying to come up with terms that maybe sort of better described us to us. Um, you know, we're we're melodic. You know, we're we're hard hitting. Um, we we you know we have songs that are sort of dynamic in terms of you know being quieter and being louder. And then there's some songs that are just you know balls out like you know thud. Um, so the sonic sort of comes. I think it comes mostly from Tom's kick drum, to be honest. Uh, that's that's sort of where the thud really comes from. No, I mean the wallop, like a sonic wallop. What is a wallop? Wallop, well, wallops are, it, it, that's Tom. Tom is the wallop. <laughs> Tom and Scott together are, you know, this huge kind of, um, you know, really heavy bottom end. Um, you know, it's it's snapping, it's thumping, it's it's all of that. It's just, it's, <laughs> but it really, the idea, I mean, and, you know, is when it, we is, play. Is a wallop like a Canadian turn or something? I mean. Oh. It's a dictionary term for like you know smack like bang right oh, like a, okay. a good a good hit right so um, you know when we play live we're often told to turn down on the stage because when we <laughs> practice we practice loud so um, that's sort of the, the the wallop is sort of like the you know not sure, <laughs> you know, hopefully I don't even know, I don't even know how I heard of you guys but I know that since about 2013 I've been spinning you guys music on my 
different radio yeah. shows. So it's pretty cool to be sitting here talking to you because when Miss Terry, hi Miss Terry, whenever she, you know, said that to set this up for us, um, I was like, oh yeah, I know who those guys are. I play their music all the time. <laughs> well, know. thank you. We we appreciate that, and we oh, you know no we know that you guys have been good to us, and um, you know whenever possible we share on social and and try and share the love. It's it's nice to be uh, it's nice to be you know liked. <laughs> oh, it is definitely. So tell me, tell everybody about the new EP, the Crockford Files. Sure. You mean this? That one, exactly. <laughs> um, so that is, uh, that's our second EP since reforming. Um, so we did, uh, we did anticipate the fall in 2013 or 14, I think we released that. No, 14 we released it. And um, yeah, so uh, Crockett Files, another EP. It was uh, a batch of songs, uh, three of which were written with the band as it is now, a couple of which were written at a time that neither Mike nor I were in the band. Um, so, uh, Smother Mary and Bangladesh were written with Anthony on guitar and Steve on vocals. And so, you know, times change, band members change. We thought, you know, well, let's, let's, let's give these a try. And, uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've sort of recrafted them in the, in the image of Crawl in 2016. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy with the result. I mean, we, we did some rearrangement, we did some new guitar treatment, um, you know, and so, so that, so the, so the EP is, uh, three brand new songs, uh, mine, which is sort of uh, harkens back to, I guess, our, you know, our glory days, um, you know, that sort of standard drop D kind of, you know, riff rock that we, we did a lot of, um, uh, dead and heavy rain are new for us, uh, in the sense that I bought a seven string guitar <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, started experimenting with that. So I don't play the seven string like, you know, a band like Meshuga plays a seven string or, well, I play probably like eight or nine strings, but, That's you know, bands that sort string? of play those, um, those multi-string guitars, they tend to do a lot of kind of noodly stuff like, uh, you know, a band like Periphery or something like that. Um, I actually play the seven string like a six string and play chords down there. So everything just is it, ends up what being... Is it, it's got a lower, uh, a lower string than the actual yeah. six string? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, it's a lower B. So oh, it's the standard okay. six plus a lower B. So that's um, the fifth, right? Yeah, and I'm not a, I mean, as anyone who's heard the band knows, I'm not a noodler. I don't do, like, you know, those solos, right? I'm not the guy from, uh, I don't know, Asking Alexander or some band that does, like, a lot of... Yeah, I don't do that stuff, right? So I just started playing the seven string like a six string, um, came up with some interesting sort of riffs and, and chords, and uh, Scott, luckily enough, had a five string bass, which has the low B as well. Uh, <laughs> So um, we were able to match it all up, and so you're we've, confusing we've, me with all these odd number instruments. I've heard of a six string bass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, uh, anyway, yeah. So we we started playing around with the uh, instrumentation, um, and uh, I, I I love those two songs. I think they're really amazing. I think they're 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 very different from our older stuff. Oh, it's uh, a cool EP, man. I just reviewed it not long ago, so it was very it's very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. It's uh, and and thanks for that. We we oh, um. Nice. Um, it's, it's different from Anticipate the Fall. I mean, it's, Anticipate the Fall was, was, were songs that were mostly written very quickly with Mike. Um, I had, you know, been playing on and off over the years and sort of come up with, with music that was probably a little faster than Crawl normally plays. So, you know, songs like Loaded and Rise, which are amazing songs and kill live, uh, those are songs that, um, are probably a little faster than Crawl normally plays, but still in that drop D tuning. Um, and, uh, so I just the fall was a very, very different raw sounding record. Some people like the sonics of it. Some people don't. It was recorded very quickly, um, and very much live off the floor. I really like the way it sounds. Um, but, uh, this one, uh, Crockford Files is much more, uh, sort of like what we used to do where we take time to arrange the songs and really, you know, think about the parts and sort of, you know, work them all out. And there's some, you know, some dynamics that we played with. Um, so it's, it's a little, this EP, I guess, is a little darker sounding than just Big Ball, um, both production wise and song wise. There's a lot more mood to it than, you know, just energy. There is energy. Yeah, very cool. How did you come up with the crop profiles? Is there a story behind that? So, yeah, um, I don't, I, am I backwards in this? Like, can no, you, you're, you're or, fine. it's fine. Okay. So uh, the, um, this picture is a picture I took uh, outside the studio we were recording in. Oh, okay. And uh, so this is a street in uh, in Toronto called Crockford Boulevard. Um, so Crockford uh, Boulevard is where the studio was. I took this picture outside. I said, 
you know, and so we started joking around the studio. And a lot of what we do, we just the band as a side a side note. The band, um, we laugh a lot together. We, you know, we we have arguments and discussions, but we laugh a lot together. And so we have a lot of fun when we do things like name songs or name albums. Um, so you know, this studio is on Crawford, and you know, for those of us of a certain age. Uh, there was a show on TV back in the 70s called The Rockford Files, which, by the way... Yes, I know. Every time I go to type in Crockford, it changes it to Rockford, and my yeah. damn thing so, drives me nuts. <laughs> so it's this awesome cop show by, uh, I think Steve Bosch put it. Anyway, amazing theme song. It had this killer theme song. Anyway, so uh, so I said, hey, what about The Crockford Files as a name? And everybody immediately just started laughing and went, yeah, that's that's great. So um, right. that's that's really where the name came from. It was it was literally the name of the studio, and, you know, Rockford Files, Crockford Files, you yeah. For some for some people, it was you know a good laugh and sort of a call back to you know uh, a bygone era of television. I guess that's very awesome. Hold on one second. 